Hey there, this is Jonathan. Welcome to the video. Uh, today I want to talk about the rhetoric of Westeros. This is the use of impressive language we find in the books of George R. R. Martin in his A Song of Ice and Fire series, and which we see translated through uh, quite faithfully into the HBO series A Game of Thrones. Now, in this world, we see power often being uh, seized and wielded uh, in a very brutal, dictatorial fashion. But what's so compelling about a lot of the writing is how people are actually using dialogue and conversation to uh, to influence other people, to negotiate, to uh, sort out their problems before it gets to the battlefield. And that's where rhetoric comes in. Uh, the books are a very good read. Lots of the characters are super smart. They have some beautiful dialogue. And you don't need to turn many pages before you see some of these uh, kind of recurring phrases coming through. I would describe as rhetoric because they're sort of impressive use of language. A number one in my list uh, is much and more. No one in Westeros ever knows just a, a medium amount about any given topic. Uh, if they know anything at all, then they know much and more. I know much and more of dragons, Tyrion might say, or I know much and more of battles. It seems to be a, a sort of a verbal tick that they use uh, to convince other people that they're, uh, they're very well informed. Counterpoint to that is uh, the phrase little and less. This occurs uh, just as frequently. Game of Thrones takes place in a rather brutal medieval kind of setting and uh, there's lots of physical violence and whenever physical violence is being referred to or threatened then uh, the characters will very often say I'm going to beat you bloody or you'll be beaten bloody or when my father was angry with me I was beaten bloody. Uh, bloodiness is the is the bare minimum severity. Any beating really requires uh, being carried out to the point of bloodiness. Anything short of bloodiness doesn't really seem to count. It seems that whatever's true for beatings must also be true for penetrative sex. And whenever that's proposed in a non-consensual scenario, then it's always threatened to the point of bloodiness. The recipient of that can expect to end up bloody, as in. I will fuck you bloody. When people are feeling slightly more conciliatory uh, and agreeing with each other, which does sometimes happen in the Game of Thrones, then uh, they quite often say, I think you have the right of it. This, this occurs quite frequently when a character is trying to uh, weigh up to oppose arguments that perhaps their advisors are giving them. And uh, I think it's rhetoric because it's quite a... Uh, it's quite a gentle way of coming down on one side or the other. Rather than saying you're wrong and this person is right, they say, oh, I think X has the right of it. That makes it seem like you know, being right and, and finding rightness is a, is kind of an exercise in kind of grabbing it out of the air. You know, one person could be right, but on this occasion, the other one is right. In the world of Westeros, actors are called mummers. Actors or entertainers or court fools, jesters, uh, they're, all, they're all referred to as mummers. And what the phrase that we hear very often is uh, a mummer's farce. If, uh, if ever a character seeks to disparage some kind of plan that's been put into action, uh, they will say that this was a thing was a mummer's farce. It wasn't convincing, it was ridiculous. You thought you were playing a clever trick, but it was all a mummer's farce. Possibly the most used phrase uh, through all the books uh, of the Song of Ice and Fire is words are wind. And this is the classic riposte to basically any suggestion that isn't immediately uh, backed up by, by a physical action. If it's just someone's promise, it means nothing. In the world of Westeros, there is written language, but that doesn't seem to be a meaning like deal either. Anything that is merely spoken may as well have never have existed. Only actions and physical possessions count for anything in Westeros. Words are wind. There is quite a lot of, uh, of racy talk and, uh, and action in A Game of Thrones and uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, and there's certainly a, a lot of uh, sexualising of women. Uh, when it comes to the breasts, teat seems to be the, the only word that is really used frequently, I found, was teat, good-sized teat, that kind of, that kind of thing. It seems a very uh, unerotic term to me. They don't seem to have a set of kind of more jocular phrases uh, for the bosom that, that we uh, would know in English. Uh, it just seems to be teats. 
it could be seen as a form of rhetoric in that uh, it is a very kind of backward patriarchal type of society that uh, exists in Westeros and the kind of comparison to an animal with teats, uh, maybe just the, the terrible male patriarchy, making sure women are kept in their place. Being a very tough, uh, brutal society, the very worst thing that anyone can be, uh, especially if they're a man, is a coward. And the word we hear very, very frequently in A Song of Ice and Fire is craven. It's used to say that this person is craven, either they're scared of something presently, and also in a more definitive, this person is a craven, they are a coward. And that is really the kind of the worst insult that uh, a tough man from Westeros can lay at the door of any other fellow in the realm. If someone is a craven, they're basically useless, they are nothing. But I think it counts as rhetoric because it's such a such a definitive term. Another way of disparaging someone in Westeros is to uh, point out their lack of experience. And often uh, you might hear the phrase green boys, so-and-so, Lord so-and-so's army is just made up of green boys, they'll never win a battle because they're not experienced, they haven't, uh, they haven't blooded in the field. Uh, so green is used as, as in English to mean uh, inexperienced. Uh, there's a, a further kind of addition to that in the, the use of the phrase, a child of summer. If someone wants to say that you you have no experience, you don't know what difficulties are, they'll say, ah, oh, you're a child of summer. Because in Westeros, uh, they have these weird elongated seasons where you get a long period of summer over several years and a long period of winter. And the winters are really hard. And if an older character uh, wants to make a point against a young one who hasn't lived through a period of winter, they'll say, ah, oh, you're a mere child of summer. The very core of Game of Thrones, of course, is about who is the king or the queen who is in charge of the realm. And uh, so we would expect uh, to hear a few recurring terms in here. And uh, two that uh, occur to me as being kind of rhetorical uh, are treason and usurper. So when someone uh, believes they have the right to the throne and you know, someone else uh, does not, and that person goes against their wishes, then they don't just say that they've gone against their wishes or that they've, uh, they've done something wrong. They'll say that was treason. It's very definitive. It's saying, you know, I'm the king and anything else is treason. And usurper is, is very much the same, but because it's a Game of Thrones, at one point there are multiple people who have a claim to the throne or who, who have made a claim to the throne. Well, they wouldn't ever re refer to their opponents as fellow claimants. That's, that's far too wishy-washy. They would say usurper. I'm the king, and, it, and no, no, anyone who's not the king and is making a claim on the throne is a usurper and must be killed. So it's just a, an example of a uh, George using this kind of very, very definitive terms in the mouths of people who are staking their claim to the throne. Finally, if we head up uh, to the north of the, the realm, uh, beyond the wall, uh, we come across the wildlings. But of course, they don't refer to themselves as wildlings, they refer to themselves as the free folk. And we see that Jon Snow, who is a kind of a sympathiser to the people who live beyond the wall, he will refer to them as free folk as well, which can be seen as a kind of a politically correct uh, statement, albeit in a realm where no, no one else recognises it. No one else would call them uh, the free folk. But it's a kind of a less disparaging term of wildlings, I suppose. Wildlings does make them sound you know, like a sort of chaotic people but they would call themselves the free folk and in fact they have their own non-politically correct terms for people south of the wall because they call them kneelers because in their eyes uh, the only way to live is to live free they make their own arrangements in terms of social hierarchy they'll only follow strong people they won't follow someone just because their father was someone important uh, so anyone south of the wall who lives in a kind of social structure where there is a hierarchy in place they refer to them uh, disparagingly as as kneelers and there's one final use of disparaging regional terms that I've come across, which is uh, the word subron. Quite often people of the north who are kind of a hardy, rugged people use the very extreme weather conditions will refer to lords from the south as subron lords uh, rather than southern lords. And it just seems the term seems to have a bit more bite to it. And it comes with a little bit more baggage in terms, of, you know, these people are maybe not weaklings, but they're, they're unaccustomed to the tough, tough conditions that we're used to. 
this Southern Lord won't last five minutes in Winterfell, or this Southern Army won't be able to give battle in the windy north where we are. So that's uh, yeah, one final little rhetor rhetorical phrase that uh, George uses in his books. Anyway, that was the rhetoric of Westeros. I, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a good day. Bye for now.